You only have one life to live, so get the most out of it. On Good Life, Great Life, join me, Brian Highfield, and my guests as we share success stories, habits, mindsets, and lessons learned by successful people. These lessons are not taught in schools, but are critical for getting ahead in life. Whether you want a successful business or career, optimal health, or a lifestyle that most people just dream of, Good Life, Great Life has you covered. After retiring from a successful corporate career in my 40s, I founded multi-million dollar businesses in the sports and healthcare arenas. Now, I help everyday people maximize their lives and speak regularly at seminars, on podcasts, and radio shows to share principles on the topics of health, wealth, and happiness. Don't let a good life get in the way of a great life. Join me today on Good Life, Great Life. Well, welcome to another episode. And today we have with us Ankush Sharma. So Ankush Sharma is the co-founder and CEO of data to biz an AI and BI company based in India. Uh, welcome to the program, Ankush. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah, and uh, you know, we want to get to know you a little bit. So could you give us a little flavor about your background and what you're up to yeah. right now? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, Brian, like myself, uh, you know, I am uh, a techie by background. I have done my bachelor's in computer science. So I have graduated in 2015, around six years back. So uh, while I was in college, you know, I was not doing uh, like something of this sort. I mean, I've never imagined like I'll run my own company. Uh, I was more into the programming and databases and, you know, uh, thinking all, all those things. Uh, but then, you know, uh, when I uh, passed out of college, I joined a couple of organizations. Uh, then I joined one of the startup in India only uh, in, in my Chandigarh region. So over there, uh, while I was working in that company, you know, uh, for, for over the period of two years, uh, I worked in multiple roles over there. Uh, you know, I started as a software engineer, but then eventually, you know, I, I started uh, migrating into data science, data analytics and all. So over there, uh, I believe two things happened. So first of all, uh, it was my very first interaction with the data and the power of data, what it can do to the businesses and decision making and all. And secondly, because I was working in a startup company, so I was kind of enjoying it because I realized while working over there, I as an individual, I enjoy while, you know, I, I work on bigger problem statements. I look at the things from a very holistic level rather mm -hmm. than just working on a task based kind of thing. Right. So then these two things uh, aligned, I would say. And then uh, I found my co-founder as well in the same organization, uh, Mr. Parinchil Singh. So he's uh, still the current co-founder in the organization data to base. So then, you know, this idea of data to base came in and we thought of, okay, you know, we, we are applying data science, our knowledge in the current organization, but the application of data science or machine learning was very limited at that point of time in, in that specific domain. So we thought of, okay, let's take this thing outside to the world. And I would say for us, it was not a kind of very eureka moment. Okay. This idea came to us and then we thought of starting the startup and fundings and all. Frankly speaking, before starting data to base, I had zero experience of how to run a business, right? I am the first generation kind of entrepreneur. So I have not seen anyone in my business, in my family doing the business, right? So mm -hmm. I believe it was a leap of faith, uh, like, you know, a trust in myself. Uh, I, I kind of enjoy working this, like whatever I'm doing. So rest, everything can be figured out on the go. So uh, that's how I believe uh, this company started. And we started with a two member team, uh, you know, me and my co-founder at that time uh, in 2018, I would say. And now we are a team of almost 50 people, right? And we have expanded it. Uh, and the good thing I, I like about my business is so all the growth is organic. So we are not, you know, a, a very well-funded company because I, from the day one, have believed if we are making something, it has to be profitable from day one. So that's how I would say data to be started. And now we are, you know, sailing that uh, tide. Let's see how, how far we go. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about data to biz, but so what, what does sure. the company actually do for other companies? Sure. sure, sure, sure. So as I mentioned, Brian, like data to biz is a primarily a consulting organization and uh, we have our niche uh, working in data science solutions. So you can consider us as a B2B uh, IT company. But having our specialization, having our niche in uh, data driven solutions. So ultimately, we are consulting various businesses, we are consulting various uh, companies, people, 
uh, in becoming them data intelligent because we all know in today's world everyone is talking about data and you know data is something that gives the competitive advantages it can predict future as well in some of the cases so that's what we do actually uh, it's more sort of a consulting uh, b2b company and we help other companies to become data intelligent and we help them in that complete uh, life cycle of the company right from uh, starting when they start thinking okay now i i have this data what to do with this data to uh, becoming the very advanced version of themselves in using predictive analytics forecasting the future trends and all so that's what we do primarily in data to biz uh, but uh, you know as 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 the founders we have that vision of okay uh, this is not something that we will be you know doing this is not the only thing that we'll be doing so we have some other plans as well of building some products over the period of time you know getting some more ideas and building some specific custom uh, solutions and specific dedicated solutions for some other industries as well so that's where a couple of years back we started our first product called prep ai so prep ai is is something that we are building for edtech companies and content creators uh, you know with the help of artificial intelligence or ai solutions uh, we are solving the need of content uh, generation uh, in the form of assessments or question papers that is required by them so in today's world there is a lot of dependency on various human smes plus a lot of cost is required you know in order to get that content that can be consumed by their students or maybe their audiences so that's where uh, we are adding value through prep ai uh, you know by automating that process as much as we can so that product is out there in the market from the last one year now and doing pretty fine in terms of revenues in terms of customer growths and now uh, we are just about to launch our second product called higher lake ai so again that's a ai powered product but that is something that we are building for the uh, human resources department so because as a company you know while we were growing or while we were expanding so we felt this need uh, there is a lot of manual process that is involved in the complete hiring process right from creating a job description to shortlisting the candidates to have multiple rounds of interviews and then after having all that process you know the candidate does not join you so we are trying to somehow automate this process as much as we can and ultimately the human involvement will be required whenever uh, there is a you know there is an option or there is a requirement of making a decision so for example if you are a recruiter or if you are a hr in an organization and if you say okay i need one uh, machine learning engineer having this much years of experience having these skills having this much communication capabilities plus uh, because i am a startup company then uh, you know i am like i am looking for a person who is enthusiastic or energetic or who is not that kind of mindset not that much structured so with the help of our product we are trying to identify all these uh, characteristics all these traits uh, you know through ai and then finally we are giving a final list to the recruiter okay based upon your preferences these are the 10 uh, candidates that we found and these are the scores for each and every uh, you know each and every trait whether it's communication it's technology it's whatever it is and then as a recruiter you can take a final call okay these are the top 3 candidates whom i want to offer so we are trying to reduce that time first of all in in the complete recruitment process plus we are trying to reduce the manual effort as much as we can so as a company uh, our services business will uh, will keep on growing and we'll be you know making it uh, like we have a vision of creating the most impactful uh, data analytics company in the world uh, that's what we are currently doing but on the way we will be creating multiple products just like higher lake and prep ai so that's the overall vision of the company So tell me about the moment when you decided to create this company with your co-founder. Were were you an employee at the time with another company? Were you still employed? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I would say uh because frankly speaking I was pretty young in my career and uh-huh. uh I I just had, you know, one and a half years of job, so I did not have that much financial security. So wh- when we started this company or when we came up with this idea, so it was something that we were doing it with our existing job because we were not sure whether it will work it will not work so it was more sort of an experiment that we were doing over the weekends and after the working hours you know just to make sure and what good thing happened is like in in our initial phase we got a good customer from one of our references right they were running this uh, some business in in our local region only and they were facing some issues okay how to optimize this how to streamline this how to get best of out of it 
so then you know for us frankly speaking it was not that difficult because they were on a very basic level at that point of time but the only challenge was time because we were working somewhere else and we mm-hmm. had some more liabilities some responsibilities at that company so i i remember like th- that was a startup so you know we used to get free somewhere at around 9 pm 10 pm yeah. and then we just u- quickly used to have our dinner and then we used to rush to our uh, makeshift office that was again in in someone's house in the initial days so then we used to work till 1 pm 1 am 2 am you know just to make sure uh, things get going so then when we solved that problem uh, and just to give you the numbers so the very first customer that we served so they were in, they were a marketing kind of agency okay. right they were spending almost uh, 20000 no so not 20000 but 50000 usds per month in the marketing alone right uh, but with the software that we created or with the application that we created so they were able to say save, save almost 20000 usds without much loss in revenue so i would say that was the kind of kick off movement that gave motivation to us okay if we just work 2 3 hours daily basis and over the 15 days of time we were able to save this much money for a company then what impact we can create for other organizations who are having that humongous amount of data and that humongous amount of opportunity yeah so, so kind of create it. like a case study for yourself that you can yes. use for marketing yes. after you had your yes. first customer and and you were able to save them that much money um right. and that should be able to springboard your business and show other clients right. what you can do right agree agree and i believe for me it was not just the case study it was the confidence that i needed okay yeah. i can do so that was the kind of triggering point that motivated me to start this and take it full time yeah so it's kind of a proof of your concept and and a proof that you're you're on to a a solid business idea yes 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 and it it was proof for me i would say again rather than for my customers i it uh-huh. gave me new confidence that i can do it so that's that's the kicking point for me yeah so now now you've grown you said so you you started up with two now you're up to to 50 or so people yes. so what what were some of the challenges you had in in growing that business so yeah i would say uh, at every step every uh, phase uh, it it's a challenge right so uh, frankly speaking when you grow from 2 to 5 5 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 50 so every phase is a new phase for you because you have not been earlier over there right mm-hmm. so and when you grow or when you move to a next phase the number of variables or number of unknowns start increasing so when i say number of unmo- unknowns for example if you are growing from 2 to 5 then it means first of all you have to grow uh, your business like more business or more money should start coming in that's how you will be able to pay the salaries and then you should be able to hire those people as well like at a point at a given point of time you can't do each and everything ultimately you have to grow right so then at that point of time i would say these were the challenges like how to sustain uh, with the cash flow how to sustain with the hiring cycle then when we grew from 5 to 10 or 5 to 20 then it was more sort of like uh, again you know keep on increasing the revenue keep on hiring more and more people plus building a right culture for the organization because culture we feel is a very important thing and as an organization we have been pretty much focused on what kind of culture we want to build and you know quite honestly we have uh, built a very employee friendly cul- kind of culture right uh, so that is something that that we thought of and then we were then when we were 20 so then covid hit i mean no one was prepared for covid it was march 2020 right mm-hmm. and we had a very small office in one of the incubators just hosting around uh, 12 15 people right and then this covid thing came in so frankly speaking we were not sure like how to handle this and we all know like much of the bigger companies were even not sure like how to handle the scenario right but somehow i i told you in the starting like we had that leap of faith like let's believe in ourselves and whatever will come on the way we will figure out so with that thing i would say covid also passed and since last two and a half years we have been working remotely uh, for us most of the growth that has happened has happened in the pandemic uh, period only and uh, i would say it was more sort of a you know a good thing for us in the hindsight because now uh, you know there is no limitation of location and we can hire more people we can hire with more clients globally so yeah i i would say uh, that's the kind of journey and major challenges that i highlighted is number one how to keep on increasing the sales right how mm-hmm. to maintain the cash flow so that uh, the salaries of the employees are also not affected plus uh we are able to invest in our growth like we don't want to become st- stagnant like after 50 people we are not growing second thing was uh, hiring a 
or building a strong uh, hiring pipeline uh, so that you know whenever a new opportunity comes in or whenever our existing people or existing projects uh, get doubled up then it should not be a delay because it's more sort of a demand and supply problem if any one of the thing is hampering then ultimately the overall system is not going well right and third important challenge we uh, we faced or we are still facing is how to build a very great culture in the organization and i am quite uh, happy or satisfied till the time we have you know uh, worked till whatever we have right now and uh, i would say now we are planning to uh, you know make this company of a 100 people team in the next financial year that's the overall goal that we have kept for ourselves so again the challenges gets double you have to generate double the cash flow double the hiring pipeline uh, we have to build a middle level management because ultimately it's not just me and my co-founder mm-hmm. who can handle all the things right so yeah i mean these are some kind of some of the challenges which i wanted to highlight so how uh, uh, so when you started with with two um and now you're up to 50 and you're talking about that you need some sort of middle middle management layer Um uh-huh. what's the struggles of delegating are you because that, that's where I find like business owners have trouble like letting go of things and letting people take on more responsibility to kind of right. free up your time how how's that right. working Sure I I believe you you mentioned a very good point like as as founders uh because you are never tired of doing the thing so you believe you can do each and everything right mm-hmm. but I would say one thing I have realized like I am not perfect in all the scenarios whatever you know whatever are required to run a company for example there is a marketing team there is a sales team there is a human resources department there is a project management department there is a technology department and number of things are there so for me what thing has worked is i have always tried to hire people who are better than me in a given department so for example if we talk about marketing then so our marketing manager right now I believe he's ten ten x better than what I can think of in terms of marketing. Similarly, on the sales side, similarly on the recruitment side, similarly on the project management side. So I believe delegating becomes a little easier when you hire people who are smarter than you. And I have a very strong philosophy like, if you are hiring someone in the middle management, then he or she should be smarter than you. That's when he should be there. Otherwise, he he or she is not adding that much value. So that's how. Uh, i believe we think but yes uh, it's not like we have completely resolved the problem we are still learning like how to delegate how to make sure we are saving our time and investing onto some bigger things but yeah things are going on and we are learning and doing awesome now it's it's interesting that you mentioned building a, a culture because you saw early on that that was important to have in there yep. so what tell us a little bit more about your strategy for developing a culture within your company and what's that culture what what do you want that culture to be Sure, sure. So, uh, what I believe, Brian, like culture, is a reflection of what founders think or what founders are, right? So that's that's my philosophy, and I believe in in my case, ah, uh, you know, I am not that kind of pure businessman. You can say in in typical terms, like I value people more than money. I value emotions more, ah, uh, you know, than than the the what what loss we are getting and all those things. So. i believe for me if if i talk on my behalf it was not a that big struggle for me to build a culture because ultimately whatever culture i had in mind it's it's a reflection of me only so what kind of person i am in in my day to day life basically that's that's how i believe you know we are trying to create that culture but yes uh, with time more and more people start coming in more and more ideas start coming in so we have a very good uh, recruitment or a hr team as well right so yes uh, if if i talk about my ideal perspective of what kind of culture we should be having so we always feel like work or company is not something that an employee should consider okay this is something now i work and now i want to spend time with my family so for us working in a culture working in a company is a part of your life only as an employee right and it has to be both ways for example if company needs you for example your you know you have signed up for 8 hours per day kind of stuff but in some of the scenarios company needs more of your time like they need 10 hours 12 hours in some of the days there's a project delivery so then employee should be giving that time to the company but on the other hand in some of the cases when employee needs that freedom that because maybe ultimately we all are humans we are not machines right so mm-hmm. sometimes we do have bad days sometimes we are not able to focus sometimes we are not able to concentrate so then company should also understand like this person stood with me when i needed the most now it's my time to st- stand with that person right so 
for us that is the kind of culture we are trying to create and uh, you know in in terms of leaf policy in terms of uh, you know uh, like other things we are trying to match ourselves with uh, you know most of the typical mncs that are out there but we are also I, i'll not say like it, it's a very laid back kind of job you just log in and log out after 8 hours that's not the kind of company we are it's more sort of a very competitive company where everyone is enjoying on what he is working Mm-hmm. it is not just he's logging in for fulfilling the hours because if you're not enjoying what you're working then you might not stay for longer duration right so we are trying to create or we are trying to bring that kind of work that is ultimately motivating the person as well challenging the person as well okay i i am working outside of my comfort zone while i'm working on this right so that's how it is i mean uh, on one hand we have been very empathetic to our employees we understand their problems we understand their personal challenges but on the other hand we like doing a normal work we can't be the, the world's most impactful analytics company so for that yeah. we have to do something different right so we are doing challenging work we always push ourselves we always push our limits and that's being taken in a very positive manner like people also do enjoy okay now i am being pushed and i am learning something new and one more important thing i wanted to highlight over here so as founders or as company what we very firmly believe like if you work in data database maybe for one and a half to two years then the amount of knowledge or amount of uh, you know satisfaction that you will gain in those two years so similar kind of satisfaction you will gain if you work maybe around 5 years in some other company outside data to base so we are squeezing that knowledge of 5 years or that hard work of 5 years into 2 years and that is giving a growth as well to the individual so that's how how we believe and that's what kind of culture we are creating awesome i, I like what you said in the beginning there that the, the culture you know is reflecting uh that of the founders which i really like and i also like your tip about hiring people smarter than you so i think that's that's always good for a company in right. a in a growth phase to hire people better than them. We're running out of time, but before we go, how can our audience learn more about you, get in touch with you or learn more about data to biz? Sure. So I would say we have our website out there, uh, data to biz.com. Uh you you guys can reach over there. Plus we have various social media handles as well. We keep on posting what new we are doing, what new research we are doing as an organization because the in the field where we are we can't just settle down okay we are doing the application we do have to innovate we do have to reinvent ourselves in technology and the way of working so yeah those can be read over there plus you know i am available over linkedin i have my email id ankush.sharma@data2biz.com so if anyone wants to discuss anything do reach out to me do write to me right and i always believe it's it's a it's a kind of mutual effort or a teamwork effort rather than a single person knows each and everything so i never say like i am i am a perfectionist i am still uh-huh. learning so it's just in that learning process we are trying to build this company and this company is not just by me or my co-founder it is because the kind of good people we have in the organization and we have been very lucky to have them awesome sounds great so our guest today has been ankush sharma ankush is the co-founder and ceo of data to biz thank you for being with the program ankush same here brian thanks for having me on this call Thank you for listening to another episode of Good Life Great Life brought to you by Brian Hyfield. We hope you enjoyed listening to this week's guests and stories. If you like what you've heard, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. 